first of all, the term CDG refers to a group of disorders called uh, congenital disorders of glycosylation. Uh, it includes more than 50 uh, defects, genetic defects, heredit hereditary genetic defects, and uh, aff mostly affects children of all ages. Uh, the severe forms may manifest in the first days of life, and uh, the majority of cases in the, in the first year. Uh, they are uh, systemic diseases, and they might involve uh, all the tissues and organs in the body, uh, but mostly uh, affect the uh, brain. So uh, they um, produce the, um, developmental disorders. Uh, children uh, usually are affected by um, developmental delay from mild to severe, and uh, learning difficulties, and a motor disorder called ataxia. This is due to the fact that congenital disorders of glycosylation they are involved in the development of the cerebellum. And uh, there is a hypoplasia of the cerebellum that causes the ataxia and the motor abnormalities of these children. They have a tremor. They usually need uh, devices for walking. Uh, and um, they have also learning difficulties. But um, um, brain um, manifestations are not progressive, and these children uh, can do a stable life, can st stabilize, and have a good quality of life uh, after the first years. Um, there is only one or two main problems that, get, that can affect them. Uh, 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 regarding uh, brain manifestations. These are seizures and also uh, stroke-like episodes due to uh, coagulation defects. Uh, on the other hand, apart from these neurological manifestations, uh, this disease is a systemic disease and um, usually uh, these children may have liver, uh, kidney uh, involvement. They also have uh, hormone uh, abnormalities. They can have abnormal thyroid function. They can have abnormal sex hormones. Uh, they can have hyperinsulinism and low glucose levels. So they need a lot of uh, physician specialists, uh, pediatric specialists, uh, to take care of them. The, it, there must be a, a team, a team uh, doing the follow-up of these children to prevent uh, the compensations. So these are children that have to be followed up in a reference center, and um, they have to be very regularly controlled with blood tests and so on. And um, life expectancy after the first years of life is quite good. Mortality is mm, quite important in the first year, but after the first year of life, this student can, can do quite well. There are um, very, very mild forms that uh, they that can um, do a good school performance, like the same their they are peace. And uh, I have met in the meeting that we had with Dr. Uh, Jekin uh, a few days ago. We met children from other countries, and we could see how the phenotype uh, can be very, very broad, and how many children are very, very mildly affected. Um, Nowadays, the most important problem that we have is to, to find um, a treatment that can uh, cure the disease. The most common t 
type of defect, the uh, phosphomanomutase deficiency, which uh, is uh, uh, which affects 90% of children with CDG. We don't have cure for this disease, so we can only uh, give supportive treatment, but we cannot cure them. And um, this is the main goal, you know, to to find a treatment for these children, and that's why many um, research centers are trying to, to find uh, animal, animal models to, to learn more, more about the, um, the metabolic pathway and to find a, a treatment that can help them. Mm. Mm, yeah, diagnosis. Um, the first screening test to diagnose these children is a simple blood test uh, the, and um, the determination of a, a protein which is glycosylated and that we can determine in, in blood which is the xylotransferrin. This uh, transferrin is, uh, has xylic acids, uh, is gl glycosylation, it is glycosylated and with uh, many uh, uh, machines like the electrophoresis, capillar electrophoresis, HPLC, uh, HPLC uh, systems or the <coughs> many other that uh, Dr. Artuk will explain you, uh, we can know if there is a hypoglycosylation of this protein. And after this, um, there is thanks to the CBRR, which is a network, a research network in, in Spain, and also thanks to the Euroglycanet, which is a network, a European network, uh, the patients can be finally uh, diagnosed uh, to the level of the genetic defect, which is the, always uh, necessary to, to give uh, inf um, prenatal diagnosis and uh, genetic counseling to the families. So the samples of these children travel <laughs> through these networks until the defect is, is, is solved by the research labs. For the most frequent defects, uh, you can have a final diagnosis in a few weeks. But uh, for the um, re most rare defects, uh, there's still time to get to the diagnosis, months, many months. But uh, it, no, I think that um, a lot of work is being done and we will be able to, to arrive to the final diagnosis every time uh, in a shorter period. There is only one uh, specific treatment that can uh, prevent the, the, the evolution of the phenotype in one defect, which is the deficiency of uh, for, uh, is, uh, um, EMP, uh, phosphomanisomerasa, which is uh, an enzyme that uh, uh, is, uh, is affected in, in this defect and uh, these children uh, can, uh, can take manose, which is a sugar, a simple sugar. They can take it by mouth uh, many times a day and uh, this sugar prevents uh, the liver involvement and they, they are cured with this treatment. But for the, the, the phosphomano uh, mutasa deficiency, there is no currently treatment, as I told you. There is only supportive treatment. These children have to be um, followed by an endocrinologist to, uh, to take hormones when they are needed. They have to be uh, followed by a gastroenterologist uh, to uh, prevent the growth failure and to, uh, to take adequate food. They have to be followed by the neurologist uh, to uh, have uh, the support of um, rehabilitation programs, um, adaptive, adapt, adaptive communication devices. 
uh, they have to take antiepileptics in case they have seizures, and also they have to take antiaggregants when they have uh, high fever and coagulation defects. Um, so it is mostly supportive treatment for the CDG1A. Well, I think that we must be proud of all the research work that has been done in, in the CDG defects because um, thanks to these uh, networks that I told you about, uh, there are a lot of uh, labs interested in, in gly glycoproteins in Europe and the United States and also in South America and many parts of the of the world, um, working hard in, in this disorder. Mm, we have to go on in, in the same way and try to get found uh, grants to, to go on because I, I think it, it is uh, impressive, the work that, uh, that it's been doing in these defects.